it's not about just building it for a language but there are a lot of dialects to it like if you travel across india hindi that is spoken in spoken in delhi is completely different to the hindi that's spoken in hyderabad so how does your system fits for both of it so this is something that we kept on solving building things out and when we were ready we benchmarked against the global giants and surprisingly our accuracy was better Hey guys, welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. My name is Caleb and today the guest that we have on the show is Anant. Thanks for coming on the show Anant. Thanks for calling me here. So Anant is one of the co-founders of a company called Nani.ai and as you can probably tell from the name of the company, um what they've built is an AI powered uh, voice recognition engine. Um and this engine is being used in industries like the automotive industry, agricultural industry, um financial industry, media industry. It's pretty much Uh, a solution which can be used in in any industry here in India and the reason for that is that they're actually taking the languages that people are speaking and there's so many of them here in India um and they're they're taking the inputs from those languages the 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 audio from those languages and then they're basically translating it into text um and then that text can be used for a variety of different solutions by companies here in India and things are going really well for them. Uh, about 6 months ago they raised their series A from Samsung Ventures. Um but things have not always been great for you Anant, right? Your uh, this is your second startup. Um the first one didn't go so well. Um so I'd love you to tell me a little bit about that. Um but even before that, just tell me how did you how did you even discover entrepreneurship? How did you realize that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Okay, so my journey with entrepreneurship starts way back in 2012. or probably late 2012 but uh, i always wanted to get into entrepreneurship build business go behind the thing and build out something for the country do you do you come from a business family no i don't come from a business family but i've been super impressed with my cousins in the us and they started it out like the first generation kids in us building out a company like they are my role models so i've been seeing them grow last 17 years so i always wanted to see that why can't i do it in india so and that's how my journey with entrepreneurship started in 2012 so in 2012 the biggest problem in bangalore was bangalore was in news all over the world but not for what it is known that is technology but it was in news for a very bad thing that is garbage disposal in the city and littering in the city So it is like an everyone's problem but no one was ready to solve. So a friend of mine and couple of friends decided why don't we solve it? If not us who then? So that's how we started off a journey called a company called 300 feet eco solutions. The whole idea was the biggest problem that people here in India was facing especially in the commercial places is there is no place to throw your garbage. So people used to litter it across. So we said why don't we strategically put 300 feet a dustbin set every 300 feet that's like an average walking time 300 feet can be walked in a minute or so so you have a dustbin right there for every minute so this was the idea we did a very big pilot uh, we installed 500 dustbins in uh, the jainagar shopping complex area which is like one of the most popular suburbs in uh, bangalore so we did that and the results were amazing we could transform that particular area across but the biggest problem that we had is like how do you scale this solution across the con- country or across the city and in a financially sustainable model so we could not find a even though we are doing pretty okay but we could not find a solution to scale uh, we were trying to bring advertisements on this bins but india being a conservative company brands had this inhibitions to advertise like in the west on the bins so we had to unfortunately shut it down uh we closed down 300 feet in 2014 uh but nani we started in 2016 we started off in mid 2016 so uh yes it was a two two and a half years yeah and what what did you even i mean how did you discover this new problem what was the story there so uh this uh, points down like between the journey between my 300 feet and nani so i was always uh, ideating on lot of things with my co-founder ganesh and uh, it was one of our uh, travel to a french village 
which is around 200 kilometers from uh, Bangalore called Halalites near Gundlupet. They grow turmeric there. And it was in the era of 2015 where you don't have uh, 4G access, you did not have, I mean, internet phone signals were very glitchy in villages, you don't have uh, internet. So we were in his village and they had their crop uh, that was harvested ready to go and sell off in the market. And we asked his dad that where is he going to sell this crop. So his dad said he's coming and selling it in Bangalore because an neighbor sold in Bangalore last week. That night when we are back in Mysore and we looked up the price online, did some research, we found that the yield uh, or the return they get when going and selling it in Coimbatore is much more than coming and selling it in Bangalore. But they wouldn't know that, right? Because they didn't, they couldn't look it up themselves. Yeah, typically like if you look at the Indian population, the people who are old, they are sort of uh, find it really, really challenging to use a smartphone and everything is in English, they don't understand English. And the other problem is internet was not there then. I mean, it's just now that you see 4G internet penetrated across, but again, you still have problems within the city. Sure. Imagine a village which is like away from the city with hardly any connectivity. Sure. How would they get this price? And of course, they're not using smartphones, right? They're using one of these these phones with the, the buttons that you click, yes, right? Yes, so they use those feature phones. So they can't even browse the net. Yeah, they can't even browse the net. So we thought like, how do we take a solution? Or how do you take the knowledge? I mean, democracy is true access of information to people. How do you enable this to the 700 plus million Indians who don't read and write English, who just converse in regional languages? How do you help them? How do you take technology? I think at that time too, 2015, 2016, you know, it was finally possible for you to build a voice recognition solution from AI, right? Like this was actually, for the first time in history, this is actually happening on a, on a larger scale, right? Yes, so essentially what happened is voice recognition and speech recognition is there since 80s, but in very menial forms. 2015, 2016 is when the whole uh, artificial intelligence or I would say deep learning coming into picture, that's when you see the grand launch of Alexa, which happened in the West. So when you look at that, I mean, there it is done more to increase customer interactions, more towards customer sales. But we saw an opportunity here in India to serve the basic needs. To help people. Help people. Sure. Yet again, you've chosen a solution which, you know, the, the problem is massive, right? And so the solution also has to be massive. So weren't you, I mean, Having experienced what you did with 300 feet, didn't you look at this problem and you were kind of like, maybe this is a little bit too big to solve? <laughs> no, I mean, this was like a very big debate me and my co-founder had. Like both of us were like really comfortable in our jobs, doing extremely well. Making so, good money, right? Uh, good money, yes. So do you want to take this risk? If yes, then why don't you go solve a problem of that scale? Or else then there's no point you could continue be doing what you were doing. Sure. So this was like a drive. Yes, there is a really big complex problem to solve. And if you are successful, then you are happy that you solved it. Sure. If you are not successful, you are still happy that you tried to attempt a very big problem. So you're, you're sitting here, you're with your co-founder, you've decided to tackle this problem, right? But how do you actually, how do you actually go about building something like this? I mean, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge engine, I'm sure, like very complicated solution. Yes, so this is like, as I said, it's a deep learning uh, system. So all this deep learning system, there are two fundamental challenges to it. One is the data, one is the algorithm. You can, since we are pure engineers and we were doing similar stuff at our previous jobs, we know what are the algorithms that are required to build this deep learning system. We had that end sort of control or we are capable of building it. The biggest problem is how do you go build the data? So being a bootstrap startup, we had to figure out ways to get like this huge amount of data to build a good speech recognition system. Literature talks about 10,000 plus hours of audio, annotated audio. So that's massively huge and that is per language. And in India, we are looking today, we have engines for 10 languages. So you can imagine the complexity. So how do you build systems at scale which can get you data or how do you get this data? That was some innovations that we did. And how do you build engines that handle these languages? Now. For example, I'll give you, it's not about just building it for a language, but there are a lot of dialects to it. Like if you travel across India, Hindi that is spoken in, spoken in Delhi is completely different to the Hindi that's spoken in Hyderabad. 
So how does your system fits for both of it? So this is something that we kept on solving, building things out. And when we were ready, we benchmarked against the global giants. And surprisingly, our accuracy was better. Wow. We were shocked and we said, are we serious? You had we to like double check to see. Double check this. Then what we did, we took it to different customers and said, hey, this is our engine. Why don't you benchmark us with the global competitors? And our surprise or what we had proved in our labs came true. And that's when we found like a lot of interest in the market. Sure. Like people started reaching us out. They reached out to you. You don't even have to. We did not have to reach out. So like we did it with two, three key clients in media banking. And this became like sort of uh, uh, a talk in the town then. Like, hey, there is this company which has this great speech recognition company, speech recognition engine for Indian languages. Why don't we test them out? So, uh, till now, a lot of our sales is just by customer reaching us, then we doing an active push. Wow. So, this is across uh, different domains. And this, sorry, this was when that you guys launched and started getting all these people that were interested? This started off in a stealth mode in last uh, October, November. Okay. Uh, and uh, from then, but we officially launched it this year. Gotcha. Uh, from April. Sure. So we are uh, actively working with large customer base now. And so you've you've built this this engine. It's things are going well. You know that it's you know super powerful and and super effective at solving the problem that it's meant to solve. Um, so what's the next step for you guys? I mean, at that point, do you are you looking to sell the company? Are you looking to raise funds? Are you looking to just keep bootstrapping or get government funding? Like what what? What happened? So, going back in the journey, like uh, last year, we did have uh, an acquisition offer by a tech giant. We could have sold off the company. But we said, like, we left the job to do something big. So, why not stay in the game? Put your skin in the game. Continue this journey. And, uh, and we were extremely bullish that the way today people spend time on their smartphone touching the screen, all this is going to change in the next few uh, years to come. So it would be completely voice. So human machine interactions would be completely voice driven. So we said, let's stay in the game. And we started looking out to raise uh, the fund to grow the company. That's when Samsung Ventures came in. They benchmarked our engine. They found it to be good enough to probably use in their uh, uh, voice assistant systems in future. So they found it to be a perfect fit, probably to be used in their systems. And they said, OK. Hey, let's go for this investment. Wow. And that was six months ago, right? That was six months ago. The conversation started uh, late last year. Uh, we closed it six months back. Wow. Uh, so we were among the very few start first few startups with Samsung uh, Ventures invested in India. So we were among the first four startups which they did. Wow. So it's been an interesting journey since then. A lot of customer uh, traction. So today we work with uh, 15 to 20 customers, large scale customers and probably like 30, 40 small customers across the spectrum. Congratulations. That's, Thank you. that's super awesome to hear. And what does the future for the company look like today? I mean, where, where are things? I know you said that probably the future of smartphones is going to change. You know, voice recognition will become more and more important. But what does the future of Nani.ai look like? Future lies like we are, uh, as I said, we are building uh, enterprise specific voice assistants. It is like Siri or Alexa for your own enterprise. So this is going to be like helping uh, enterprises in having great customer interactions, customer activities, like customer support, customer services, uh, more personalized to human beings. And if you look at today in India, the biggest channel of customer support is call centers. And you know how a call center service is. So imagine a voice assistant like Siri or Alexa sitting on the telephony line. That's what Nani does. So we build conversational assistant on telephony line where whenever a customer reaches out to the enterprise, it is a personalized agent that is sitting on there. Know that, OK, this is Anant who's called. These are Anant's preferences and trying to solve your problem in real time and in the language that you prefer. 
So uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, if you have any questions for Anant about uh, his journey as an entrepreneur or about Nani.ai, um, you can leave them down below. And also, we'd love it if you could share this with anyone that you think would be interested in this video, maybe someone that's interested in AI or voice recognition software. Um, and again, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Really thanks appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, Thank you. Definitely, definitely. All right, there we go. Thank you.